so far we've gone over together how to create an inventory system as seen here. We've also created a crafting system as seen here. Today I'm going to start on another series of yet another feature there seems to be almost no tutorials on. Placeable structures. What I mean by that is an item you select and then place in the game world to interact with or just to build upon. This system can be extended to create physics sandbox based games but is mostly used in RTS games for placing buildings and also RPG and survival games for placing items. Within the next few episodes you should learn about using grids instead of lists in a GUI, event dispatchers, blueprint interfaces, and advanced ray tracing. By the end of this series you'll have an advanced knowledge of vectors and ray tracing and using it to calculate slopes as well as grid snapping and all sorts of other things. With that out of the way let me introduce myself, Insomnia from UnrealTech.net, a division of BlenderTech.com. Our motto, create your way. And welcome to the first video in a series on using Unreal Engine 4 and blueprints to create placeable structures. With that said, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is lay out the main GUI widget and the buttons that we'll be using for our grid. So, so we'll right click in the content browser and we're gonna make a new folder. We're gonna call it placeable structures with an underscore, because that's just the way Unreal is. Alrighty. And inside of the GUI folder, if we expand upon that, I'm going to make another new folder called Placeables. Alrighty, perfect. We're good to go. So if we open up the, um, actually, let's start in the Actor Placeable Structures folder. I'm just going to actually rename that to Placeables. So let's create, as usual, a, um, so right click in the content browser and go to Blueprints. And we're going to start with Structure. And so, of course, my structure prefix is capital S underscore. I'm going to call this placeables. Yeah, we'll just call it placeables. And so we'll open that up and I'll bring up the structure editor. And we're going to make some variables. We're going to have structure name. We're going to have structure details. Actually, we could just keep these short even. Let's go name, details, icon. Um, what else? Oh, yes, build time. Preview mesh, which may be a final mesh too. So maybe I'll just call that a uh, mesh. I think that is it that should do us. We may edit this as we get further along if my memory uh, remembers more. So the name is going to be a string. The details is going to be a string. Oh yes, we're going to need another new variable called, of course, um, placeables, or we'll just call this structures. No, we'll go placeables. Placeables array. All right, so icon is going to be a texture. Build time is going to be an integer. That's going to be how many seconds it takes to build the structure. Um, the mesh is going to be a static mesh component, or just we can just set it to a static mesh to make things easy. And the placeables array is going to be an actor, uh, actor class, and it's going to be an array. So we're going to press the grid icon and. I think we might also need um, class to place. We'll see if I remember. And that would be also an actor. I can't remember if it's an actor class or an actor object. We will. I think it's an actor class though. All right, so we'll save that. And we'll go back to our main window and we will create uh, a new, so we'll right click and we'll create a new blueprint class. It'll be an actor, and this is going to be our BP underscore placeables master. So again, just like in our um, just like in our inventory and crafting setup, we have a master class that holds all information um, about um, the item 
or sorry, it's 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 a class that holds all of the logic that's shared in between all the items, and this is going to become much more useful in this series than the crafting or inventory series, because there really was no logic to share in those. Um, but the main reason we do this is for inheritance. That way, when we right click and hit create child blueprint class, um, you get a class that is a child of this one, which means that it inherits all of its properties. And um, in this case, we'll also have logic that will be um, shared in this, in this class. So we want to open that up and we want to create a new variable. So hit the plus variable button and that will be, we'll go S placeables main. And that variable type in the details panel is going to be S underscore placeables. And we want that to be editable. So hit the little eye, eye icon or hit editable. And we could give it some, a tool tip if we wanted. All of the info about the structure to place. We are also going to um, go, go to add component. We're going to add a static mesh, which we're going to call structure uh, mesh. And then we're going to click and hold down so that we can drag it. And we're going to drag it onto the default scene root so that it becomes the default scene root. Um, that way, um, everything that we do to this actor will, will, um, act upon this, the structure mesh as its root. I spelled that wrong. Structure mesh. All right. In the construction script, and we need to do this here, we need to take S placeables main, hold down control so that we do a getter and click and drag this variable and bring it into the graph editor and that'll get you a getter. And then we want to break that and we'll do this down below. And we want to get the mesh and what we want to do is we want to drag off of the construction script execution pin and do set static mesh structure mesh. And we want to set it to the mesh. So what that means, and so I'll explain the root um, class a little bit uh, better. So now if we go back to the main window and I right click and create child blueprint class, I'm just going to call this BP placeables um, underscore. We will start with a wall. So that'll be a placeable wall. So we'll open that up. And so um, in here, if you go to class settings, or sorry, class defaults, if I compile BP, after you compile BP placeables master, that is, and then, um, and then if you go to class defaults in your child class, you'll notice that we have, um, placeables main, um, variable details even though it's not in our variables list now it is if we pick the eye icon and choose show inherited variables and that shows all the variables that we inherit um just from the stock class and that we've created so they're technically there but we just don't see them because they're inherited we also see structure mesh and so in this one if we go back to class defaults we'd give it a name like a wall this is a uh, 1000x100, that's only one meter, let's go two meters, x200, x50 wall to build houses with or something. Um, I don't have an icon yet, we will get to that. We can use our thumb box that we've been using for all the series in the meantime. And we're gonna need an actual mesh. Um, so we'll take the, um, We'll take the cube mesh. If you don't have a cubular mesh, then um, just create one and import it. Or you can create a project and make sure you check off um, oh, starter content and that'll give you a bunch of meshes you can use. The class to place is gonna be itself. So that will be BP underscore, whoops, BP underscore placeables wall. 
and we want to make this look like an actual wall so I'm just going to scale it of course I won't be able to do that because I'm setting it there so we would need to do that um, we would need to do that through code so we're just going to pretend that this is a wall so maybe we'll say this is a, I don't even know how big this is 40 by 40 by 40. This is a 40 by 40 x 40 block you can use to build walls. A, we'll call it a block of wall. <laughs> I just don't have a wall mesh handy in this project. And I want to continue. So, anyways, we can go back to our BP Placeables Master Class. And so, the reason we want to set the static mesh in the construction script is because if we did it in the event graph, then what would happen is you would just get a blank mesh because your BP Placeables Master is always going to have a blank mesh. Otherwise, every single child class is going to have that mesh by by default and it's going to inherit it. Through the construction script, however, that means that a child class will have it set to whatever mesh we set in the class default, so a cube mesh. And so that's why, even though we haven't set this, you can see it's blank, the static mesh is none. Because we set it in the mesh here, if, I'm to, if I was to clear that, it would go away, just like that. You can see how that works because it ins it's inheriting it. So I'm just gonna save and close that for now. I'm gonna go make one quick uh, editor preferences setting. I'm gonna go to the blueprint editor. I'm gonna turn off spawn default blueprint nodes. I find that very annoying. Also, just so you're aware, of course, I turn off show friendly variable names and open asset editor tabs in new window. I turn those default options off. I find them annoying. So in our main class, we need to start setting some stuff up. However, I'm going to leave that because I said we're going to create our GUI first. So with that set up, that's just the basics. Um, let's go into our GUI folder, into our placeables. Let's right click in the content browser. Let's go to user interface. Let's go to widget blueprint. And my widget prefix is capital W underscore. And we want uh, placeables main and then we want to do the same thing so since it's already blank I'm just gonna right click and duplicate or hit control W I'm gonna call this placeables button or maybe place uh, yeah placeables button it'll be a grid icon but technically it'll it'll be like a button and we'll help just save everything to be safe all right so with those created let's start with the button that'll go through pretty quick so what we're going to do is a little trick here we're going to go to a uh, fail screen and we're going to press custom and we're going to do a width of let's go 64 if i could see my keyboard 64 with a height of 64 and that gives us uh, an idea of what it'll look like in its uh, when it's in its grid. And so we want to delete the canvas panel. And we want to start with a size box in, under panels. Size box, there we are. As you all know, I like to use size boxes um, so that I can change the size of things um, at a later date at a later date basically if I need to and with an height override of 64 by 64 perfect alright and then we want a um, button just a basic button like so and let's call this button icon and make sure it is a variable it should be by default and then we want um, we want to add a border on top of that like so and we want no padding on that and 
and we also want to uh, set it to horizontally align fill and vertically align fill and so this will give us an image that we can use and we'll set the brush color to uh, one of my default favorites something like uh, we'll go usually I use, we'll go 191919FF might go a little bit darker yet but we'll basically give it a little bit of a uh, a little bit of color there all right perfect after that we should be able to add a canvas panel we don't need to but we can and make sure it has no padding and then after that you can add text in here wherever you wanted so if I added some text set it to say um, size 12 and then you could put its anchor, I don't know, say in the center, you could set its position X to zero, position Y to like 10, five. And this could, this could be like, say, um, we could later set it up to like how long it'll take to build. So maybe this could be build time. So like say 11 seconds or something. You could display that here. Um, we'll get into that much later though. So for now, I think I'm just gonna turn that off essentially by just making it blank, but letting you know that that option is there. So um, we will compile and save that. That is good enough for now. And we can go back and open up our widget placeables main. And this is where we will start creating our actual GUI. Now, of course, um, how you design it kind of depends on how your GUI system is set up. Um, later in all of these series, I'm going to show you how to create a widget switcher and how to update all of these um, placeables, crafting, inventory, how to update all of them. Um, using the widget switcher so that you can have tabs so that you can click in between you know placeables inventory crafting level um, player info uh, stats whatever but uh, we'll start with a pretty standard setup that I've been using which is to start with a size box and I'm going to set the width and height to uh, what I've been using, which is a width of 1400 and a height of 800. I've been using that as a standard to fit into uh, my uh, widget switcher setup. But of course, um, you can use any width and height you want. Um, after that, we're going to want a vertical box start working vertically and that is going to be our root and we're going to make it a variable so that we can do some uh, dragging of the window um, until we set up in the until we actually set up the full widget switcher setup and then inside of that vertical box um, we're going to want to add a border and we will call this the border uh, Order title. This will be our title bar, um, and we'll set that to fill uh, at about zero decimal zero seven five, and we want no padding. And we want to set its color to an off blue gray of some sort, kind of a Windows feel. Just, I don't know something, something in there. Uh, and then we want to take another vertical box since we're working vertically vertical box where are you and put that inside of the border and in that vertical box we want to place some text so take a text and drag it in there and that text block we are gonna call uh, placeables or whatever you want we're gonna set it to center and that text will set to about 38 I think looks good uh, I'm gonna change it to well, we'll leave it white and we'll give it maybe some shadow by 
selecting shadow color and changing the alpha to one, change the shadow offset to two and two, so it's a little more visible. We want it to be centered, uh, and oh yes, we also want to choose text align center horizontally and vertically, like so. And then in the uh, vertical box root, we want to add another border. And this one we also want to set to fill with a value of one so it will take up the rest of the space. Um, we want to make sure that it has no padding as well. And change its, its color. We'll choose something like the title. It never picks the right color. Let's grab the color code of the title there. Border, brush color, hex code, copy that, border. I'm going to call this border, um, we'll go border main box. And I'll change the brush color to that hex code, except we'll make it uh, slightly darker. Or lighter, actually, it might even work. A little bit lighter and a little bit less saturated, that'll work. Whatever, good enough. All right, cool. So after that, um, we want to add a uh, vertical box to the main box. So we'll add a vertical box to the border main box. And inside of that, we will start with a spacer. Spacer, spacer is under primitive. And then we will add a horizontal box in the vertical box and we'll call that horizontal box, horizontal box details. And we'll put a spacer in that horizontal box as well. So the very first spacer here in the vertical box will be a Y of five since it's vertical. You'll see that gives us a little bit of uh, spacing here vertically. And in the horizontal box, um, We'll, we'll set it to an X of five. And so if I was to set the horizontal box um, details, if I was to set it to fill, you would see how that would give us, um, I guess you won't see that for a second here, but leave it on auto anyway. So then what we're gonna wanna add after the spacer is a size box. This is an important size box, not just a preference size box. And this is gonna be the, um, total size of the grid of buttons or the grid of icons the placeable buttons that we're going to create so we will um we will set it up uh the size box to have a width and height of about 512 by 512 and you could choose any size you want as long as it's a power of two or roughly so anyway that way um for example it's 512 if i divide it by a button size of 32 i get 16 buttons um and if i put say a padding of two so two times 16 that gives us 480 480 divided by 32 still gives us 15 if we put padding in there so um it had or it should be a power of two anyways but it's completely up to your preferences there are ways around that um but i find that's a good size to start with so in that size box we want to add a border and remember these borders can always be replaced with images later that's that's the whole point of using them so i'm going to call this border slots background bg for background and i'm going to give it a brush color of oh i don't know we'll take that same hex code i want the buttons to be the darkest though so something like that that'll work and so um, in this same horizontal box, um, or sorry, we need to add inside of the border our grid panel. So that is the grid panel right here. So that grid panel is where we will set rows and columns for our buttons, our grids, uh, buttons, our icons, whatever you want to call them. 
and select this grid panel and make sure it's a variable so choose is variable and let's give it a name so that we can recognize it we'll call it grid panel main grid and then we want to add another spacer into this size box spacer 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 there you are into the size or sorry no into the horizontal box I believe. yes because then we want a horizontal spacing so I'd be an X of we'll say about 10 15 we'll go 16 something like that give you a little bit a little bit of space in between there you know what I might even go 32 and then after that um, we want to add a vertical box into the horizontal box details so we'll add another vertical box and we'll drag it into the horizontal box details we'll start working vertically again and in there we want to add a border to start with and we can call this vertical box whoops window details we can call this vertical box vertical box uh, selected item details or just selected item maybe would be better and then we um, have a border we can we can call that border selected item and we want to set that border um, to fill alrighty and then we want to give it a color it's kind of hard to see there um, let's set it we'll take that hex code again and let's set it um, even darker or let's go lighter than than the grid but darker than the background so something like that I'm sure will work we'll go 225 something like that and then the vertical box that holds the border, uh, we need to set that to fill as well. So as you can see, that fills the whole area like that. And then we want to make sure that inside of this vertical box, there's one last spacer. So we'll add a spacer to it. Spacer. So that will... Oh no, sorry. Horizontal box details needs one last spacer. So that should be at the end there. Yep, perfect. So if we set it an X value of about five, the same as the other side, that'll just bring it in just a little bit. You could even go a little bit more like eight or something like that, 10, whatever you prefer. So anyways, um, after that, uh, we want we have our border selected item. So inside of that, we wanna place a vertical box we'll put all our details stuff in here uh, so we'll start out with a spacer which will have a Y value of about five even a little bit further we'll go we'll go about eight again or even ten and then we'll put some text in there so a text block into that vertical box and we will call this one um, We'll, we'll set its text as placeable item name and we will um, we'll set that to about 28 so it's more of a title and we'll also give it some shadow by selecting shadow color and just turning the alpha up to 1 change the offset to maybe 1.5 1.5 and we'll center it alrighty and then we want to add another spacer into the vertical box that one there and then uh, it want it'll have just a small value so give it a Y value of about uh, three you don't want very much just enough to give maybe even two just enough so that there's a tiny tiny bit of space padding in between it and the next one which is another size box where are you size box size box size box into the vertical box 
and that size box is going to have a, a value with height of 64 by 64 and then we want to set it to a horizontally aligned center now you could uh, you could set it to say 128 by 128 maybe if you're working with larger icons that would give you a little bit more like of a picture of it so that's completely depend dependent on how big you start your icons at um, so yeah and then in inside of that size box we just want to add a border and this border um, will be the, the icon basically so let's call this border um, border uh, selected icon or icon selected all right cool so that'll work and then after that um, size box and border we want another spacer into the vertical box and we'll give it a Y value of again somewhere around five just a little bit that one can go bigger actually about ten because this will be the details up next so we'll add another text box so grab some text put it in the vertical box and we will set its details um, we want it to be a little bit smaller so set it to something like 20 maybe maybe even 18 and um, we want auto wrap text on so that anything longer goes to the next line and we can test that by giving it a big long thing placeable structures um, details from the structure from the structure structure variable details which is a string will be displayed here when a grid icon is selected all right well perfect it works and then we are pretty much done um, we'll add another spacer into this vertical box here I will set this one to a large Y, like 128, maybe. And then we want to add a, a size box again, because this is going to be dependent on how you like to set it up. A size box, um, I think a good size, is, I think I remember is around 196 six by square no hor uh, rectangular so like 178 um, and then set it to horizontally aligned center and in there um, we're gonna put our buttons let's let's take a spacer first and put it in the uh, vertical box selected item select that spacer and give it a y value of like 64 Nope, I'm doing that wrong. Doesn't make sense. Okay, we'll just delete that spacer. Something's set up wrong. Uh, we'll just leave it like that. So, and we want a border to go into the size box. That'll be our background color. We'll call this size box final buttons. Um, and then the border will give it a brush color of that hex code again we'll go maybe again less saturation so it's more gray we'll go maybe darker all right and then we'll want to add a vertical box into the border and then we can add our two buttons so button and button and we'll set each of those to fill and then we'll add a text block to each of them and actually we'll just do one first so we can copy and paste it we'll set that to about 38 36 something like that uh, the first one will be place 
Yeah, we can go 38, I think. Give it a shadow by choosing shadow color and chaining, ch turning the alpha all the way up. And that should be good. Um, actually, I want this one to be black. So we'll change its color to black and we'll change its shadow color to white. And X and Y to 2 there. If you want to be able to see it. All right, and then we can just copy that. So copy, and then choose the second button and paste. Okay, or, or try that again. Copy and paste, and then the second one will be a cancel button. Perfect. Alrighty, so that will be our GUI. So we can save, save everything, compile and save. So let's start setting this stuff up. This is getting pretty long though, so um, I'm going to leave that for the next episode. So in the next episode, we will create all the logic to fill our grid panel here with a bunch of our um, buttons. So it will have, where are you, place of blood? It'll have like that. It'll have a whole bunch of them. And we'll set up the math to uh, automatically create the row and columns, um, and so on and so forth. And so we'll create a little uh, grid panel there. So we'll, we'll set up the logic for that. We'll set up the bindings for the details when one is selected, and how to figure out which one is selected. Um, we'll create the logic for the place button. Uh, we'll go back into the master and we'll set up all the logic for calculating build time um, yeah build time and we'll also we'll set it up so that we have two materials um, basically so that when you go to place let me find a mesh here when you go to place uh, an item it'll be like ghost white as you're uh, moving it around while in game um, and we'll make it so that if it collides with another mesh or anything, it'll turn into like ghost red. And then we'll set it so that when it's finally placed and you click and let go, then it'll be uh, set to its final color after it's done building. And um, we'll also have it replaced by an actor if you fit something that has like say particle effects or it has interaction or something we'll go through that so a lot of all be in the next episode we will also create a um we'll also create a blueprint interface um uh let's just knock that out real quick now actually let's go into um placeables let's right click blueprints we want a blueprint interface and we'll call it uh, my interface prefix is BPI underscore and we'll call it place place structure we'll open that up and we'll make a new function called grid snap and in there we'll just have a single input which will be an integer called snap size and so we'll use that once we uh, get to turning on or off grid snapping. So we'll just compile and save that and we'll be good to go. So yeah, make sure everything's compiled and saved. And then we will see you guys in the next episode. By the way, we have a new website at Unreal Tech. That's T-E-K dot net. And a new Twitter at twitter.com slash Unreal underscore tech. T-E-K. So we'll be setting that up when we have some time as well. And once that's done on that website, you'll find all these projects, you'll find some articles, you'll find um, some books, stuff like that. So expect that to be coming as well. So maybe bookmark it or uh, look out for some announcements. So anyways, thanks for watching from the team here at unrealtech.net, a division of blundertech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're on social media on the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve based on your community input. We also take requests, so we'll see you next time. Remember, create your way.